<clears throat> okay. <sighs> I thought today would be a nice day to start a video in a very different manner. By the way, did you notice? New chair. <laughs> All right. So let's start the video. All right. A very important uh, thing to share with you before you watch this video. Actually, there are two separate topics in this particular video. One is cheating on yourself and one is cheating on your partner. Initially, I thought I would make two separate videos of this, but I don't know, just, you know, sometimes you just talk and uh, yeah, things go off script. So I've ended up speaking about cheating on yourself and the second one is cheating your partner. Okay. Now, the timestamp will be put down below. When do I start speaking about cheating yourself? And when do I start about speaking to your partner? So you can check the timestamp down below. I would recommend you watch the whole video. Okay, that's my sincere recommendation, not for uh, me getting more views and ads and all that. I'm sincerely telling you, watch the whole video. It would be better. But if in case you're only interested to see Oh, when is it okay to cheat my partner and why should I cheat my partner and is it right, is it wrong, then you can use a timestamp. But whatever said and done, please uh, don't take my advice out of context, which you will see in the introduction. And please listen carefully to at least the first few minutes before you decide to skip. And as usual, as I always tell you, put your thoughts and comments down below. I definitely read them and feel free to disagree with me because uh, it need not be that everything I say you agree with me. All right. Having said that, watch the video at your own risk. And remember, some of the stuff that I'm speaking here may not be safe for certain categories or certain ages. So make sure that you use discretion while watching this video. All right. Having said that, watch the video. Let's start. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. All right, in today's video, I'm going to uh, share with you why sometimes it is necessary for us to, I don't know whether the right, for lack of the right word, uh, say it's okay to cheat sometimes. Uh, whether it's cheating ourselves with our goals, whether it is cheating your partner, whether it is cheating whatever. Now you'll be like, are you serious? Cheating your partner, partner as in spouse. Okay. So when is it okay? Should you cheat? And if yes, why should you cheat? I'll answer all the questions in this video. All right. For those of you who just joined in, my name is Lloyd Macedo. I'm a personal branding strategist based in uh, Thailand, but I offer services for uh, getting well-paid jobs, that is, especially in the Middle East, specifically UAE and Dubai. People also take my services, you know, when they want to settle down in Canada, Australia, Europe, and especially some parts of USA. People also book my services for coaching and consulting, both personal and professionally, when they have problems and challenges. Details are put down below. Okay, so now, today's controversial topic, when is it okay to cheat? Let me have a sip first. <clears throat> All right. Now, before I do give you my opinions, please understand this much. There are some of you who literally take every word that I say as gospel. You take it as, Lloyd said it, fine, that's it. And uh, there are some other people who, if they admire someone, it's like a cult-like following. Whatever the person says, you blindly follow it. That is not right. Whether it's religion, whether it is a cult following, whether it's a religious head, whether it is 
your mentor, whether even if it is someone you follow or admire, like for example, me, do not take everything that I say literally. Evaluate, question yourself, reflect, and then decide whether what I'm saying is applicable to you. Because remember, I don't know you personally. I'm giving you advice. So it's like a blanket statement. It is like, I'm just imagine if 1000 people watch this video, it doesn't mean this advice is applicable to all the 1000. And the reason why I'm giving you this disclaimer before I even start the video is because keep this in mind, every action that you take, there is a price to pay. Both you will pay the price and the people who love you will pay the price. And sometimes the price can be more than you can handle. Okay. Having said that, now let me share with you, L listen to the whole video, listen to the whole video and then you decide. Okay. And feel free to comment down below. Now I'll, I'll give you a small example. I, I do not know whether I'll be uploading that video today. Uh, it's a, a YouTube shorts where I went to McDonald's this morning. Okay. Generally, if you know, if you have been following my channel for over the year, for the past year, after I wake up in the morning, I practice intermittent fasting. That means I don't eat anything until six in the evening or four in the evening. And uh, throughout the day, I just have black coffee with butter. It's called bulletproof coffee. You can Google search. And uh, after four o'clock or six o'clock in the evening, I have my first meal, which is high in protein. Okay, and then I eat anything throughout the day. And because of this diet, I kind of lost. Um, I was 125 kilo. After my bariatric surgery, I came to 80 kilo. It was stuck at 80. Now I'm 69 after my intermittent fasting. So my body has really shrunk down from what it used to be muscular, big, fat, 125 to 69. Massive. Okay. However, there are days where I don't feel like doing it. There are days where your body is just craving to eat. And remember, hunger is like a feeling. Hunger is a feeling. If you ignore hunger for some time, you, you stop thinking about it and you get busy. Uh, that is what you'll experience if you try intermittent fasting for the first time. You'll feel very hungry, especially at the time that you're eating because your body works like a clock. So if you have been eating at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock sharp, before 1 o'clock or 12 o'clock, five, 10 minutes before you'll start feeling hungry. And then automatically it's like a Pavlov's dogs. The minute the bell rings and you'd want to eat. However, once you start intermittent fasting, you'll feel hungry a few minutes before whenever you used to eat. And it'll continue for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour. But after some time when you don't give your body what it wants, body says, ah, okay, forget it. Let's eat. Uh, let's get the energy from the fat that is in the body. And then you totally forget about it. That is why uh, tomorrow, if you will be, you know, if uh, go through your memory, if you were busy, if there's something critical, there was an accident, even if you, even if you forget eating lunch, uh, uh, breakfast, lunch or dinner, you're so engrossed with what is happening. You don't even think about it. People even have to remind you to drink water. Like, for example, if you're stressed out at work or there's a target or you know, there's something that you're really concerned about. Okay. So there are days, even though I've been doing intermittent fasting for a year, there are days where I really feel hungry sometimes. Like today, what happened was in the night time, I was really tired. I've not been sleeping for a couple of days. So by 11ish, after I had soup, I just had soup with corn, you know, corn, corn on the cob. Uh, I really feel very sleepy. I crashed. I crashed. And lo and behold, lucky for me, this time I managed to sleep until six. Others, I generally get up. I did get up to go to the toilet uh, in between. But if I get up, then I can't sleep again. So I woke up at uh, 5.30. I realized, okay, I'm not going to sleep. So I uploaded the three videos. Uh, I just had to publish them. But then I started to feel hungry. And I remember even in the night, I was thinking about food, 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 food. Even when sleeping, tossing and turning, I was visualizing food, I was imagining food. And uh, after I got up, even though I was doing work, I was still thinking about food. Finally, I told myself, 
today i'm really not in the frame of mind for intermittent fasting and i was actually thinking of mcdonald's you know that breakfast burger where they give you with a different kind of a bread and uh, egg and you know burger so i was like i'm going to have this today so i checked on my wife she was uh, you know sleeping she was like no 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 i'm sleepy you know i said okay fine and i immediately left normally i take my family or i don't go without a fam today i decided nothing doing i'm going to go i went there went to mcdonald's ordered the burger i might share you video shots with you here and uh, i uh, there was a special offer through the app that i'd get 25% off so i ordered one burger with uh, just the burger whatever the other one was with egg okay so i had two and by the time i got full they give you uh, coffee with it and then while coming back i dropped in starbucks i ordered a nice little uh, coffee you know they have lot of sugar lot of cream which was once again breaking from the tradition of my normal day and by the time i came home i had done a little bit of shopping here and there uh, got some things for wifey and she was surprised she was like oh today you're eating right from morning and then she saw the starbucks coffee that i bought take away i said yeah today i'm not feeling like you know uh, doing the diet she was like okay fine sometimes happens so the point i'm trying to say is today was one day where i actually cheated okay now obviously there is that fear some people have that if you go on a strict diet and if you fail once you generally give up that is only that happens only if you make it so strict so unbelievably like uh, hard that there's no other choice but to give up in my case i have made the intermittent fasting in a way where it is fun and enjoyable like after i finish my the fasting duration i before that i actually plan out this might sound funny i actually plan out how will i reward myself what would i like to eat whether it's a club sandwich whether it's a pizza whether it's a sweet i make a list in a google doc and i say this is my reward today so i'm actually waiting for the fast to finish and a reward and obviously i can't eat much because of my bariatric surgery so i reward myself and i realized i've come to realize that i'm not going to die if i don't eat for 12 hours after waking up and uh, there's no shortage of food like the memories that came from my childhood that i'll never get food or if i eat this food my parents will not buy it i have enough and more chocolates enough and more crisps chips as you call it enough and more peanuts nuts macadamia nuts it's like a bloody go down my fridge is bloody full so i know for a fact i am not starving and even my wife knows that's why initially when my wife came first she was like you know durian which is the thai favorite uh, fruit when she came the first time she was like so excited and she was so afraid that um if i didn't buy the season would go because she came from you know a simple life where they would eat this expensive fruit once a year now after she got married to me she can literally eat it every alternate day when it comes out and i literally uh, give it to her but i reward her like if you do something you get this as a reward so she doesn't take it for granted okay so that is what i mean by cheating on a schedule or cheating on a diet or cheating yourself if you discipline yourself all this while it's okay to have a cheat day okay and you need to plan it out plan it out that i'm going to have a cheat day and remind yourself after the cheat day you slowly get back to what you used to do then it's okay but if you have a cheat day and there is no end to the cheat day then all the gains that you have is gone okay now i spoke to you about cheating in terms of diet but what about cheating on the spouse what about cheating on your relationships 
Now, that is a very serious topic. Now, this is where it gets a little sensitive. Man and woman. We all know that men have certain rules, women have certain rules. In, in most of the societies, especially the ancient one, the eastern one, men have certain perks and benefits that women do not have. And in extreme cases, men are like the alpha and women are treated like slaves. Now, I'm not coming to that extreme, that your wife is your slave. And if, if in case your, your life is like that, good on you. Like if in case, let's say you're Muslim, I actually have, there is one guy in one of my groups, but he's kept confidential. He has four, four wives, huh? not joking. He has four wives. Okay. And his wives are perfectly okay with it. Well, but he wants it to be confidential. Then there is, there are two or three members who are married, uh, old enough to be someone's grandfather. They have daughters and some of the daughters even are married and expecting or they have small children. And yet that father or grandfather has girlfriends. They're sleeping around. I have members like this in my And you might say, oh, how disgusting, how evil. They are very good people uh, in terms of career, in terms of business. As human beings, they are really nice. Yes, this is a vice that they have. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. Everyone has a vice. Now I know what you'll say. <laughs> you'll first say, oh, Loy, if a guy can cheat on his wife, why can't the wife cheat on them? Well, if you can and you get away with it, good on you. That's your call. I know now what you'll say. What about your wife? <sighs> I'm the boss of the house. I'm the one who's earning. I call the shots. I'm the alpha male. She doesn't earn. She's dependent on me. If I'm not there in her life, her life is literally destroyed. Completely. So, I have the upper hand. I've earned the upper hand. And you, you might say, oh, you are a bastard. I respected you. I'm just telling you facts. Anytime she wants, she can leave. I've told her. Anytime, even without cheating her. And by the way, I've not cheated her until now. I've told her this. Anytime you feel you'll get a better life somewhere else, you can leave and go. Okay? I've told her very frankly. Now you'll be like, Oh, does your wife know that you are like this? My wife and I have had conversations where I've explicitly told her, if I were to go to Bangkok and if I were on a holiday by myself, 100% I will go to one of those massages where they give you a little bit of jiggy with it or happy ending it's called or bubble bath. Maybe I don't want to experience. But the only reason why... I'm hesitant. I'm being very explicit with you because I've been a playboy throughout my life. I've cheated on all my other partners. The only reason why I wouldn't want to do it is I just don't want to gain STD. There is enough and more cases. In Dubai, you get tested every year, all the expats. Here, there is no such thing. It's like in India. There's no one testing your STD, nothing. So STD is one of the biggest fears that I have and I don't want to get one. And then having the embarrassment after I get one to explain myself. So better than that, just avoid that. Okay. Have I gone to these women before? 100%. My wife knows that I have gone to happy ending massages. I've had plenty of girlfriends. She knows that. Even when I was in Thailand, I had plenty of girls. Okay. So now the question begets. I'm married. After marriage, what if I feel like cheating on my spouse? Now, let me uh, shock you. I don't know if you get shocked. It's not that it has not crossed my mind. And any man who is married, if he tells you that he never has fascinated or been fascinated about another woman or sexually thought of another woman or had a fantasy, he's lying. Either that guy is important, he's too old, or there's something seriously wrong with him. Otherwise, normal, normal majority of the men do have sexual fantasies and do fantasize about other women. Okay, 
So now it comes down to um, do I fantasize? Lucky for me, because my sexual libido is very low, because I used to take testosterone and bodybuilding and all that, it used to be super high, now it's super low. It is not as much as before. So, if before, when I was young, uh, let's say in a week, if in a week I would think about cheating on my partner, it would be six days out of seven. Today, if I think of cheating on my partner, it'll be maybe once in once in four months, once in six months. I might have a fantasy. I might have a thing. Say once in three months. Let's give once in three months. I might fantasize or look at a porn or wow, wouldn't it be nice? Or, and actually feeling tempted about having sex in these last six, seven years that I've been with my wifey. Uh, maybe three times, three, four times, I've thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice? Thought. Means not action. I've not actually done it. Okay. Now, would I do it? The fact is, yes. If I was, I didn't get laid for a month, two months, three months, for example, and uh, there was an opportunity, easy opportunity to have um, just a happy ending or no strings attached. Yes. Okay. So now without dragging it, the question comes, when is it okay to cheat on your spouse? And why do I suggest this? See, all, most men, not all, they find it very hard to be dedicated to one woman. Like they call it, you know, one jaina. It's very hard. Most men who are active physically, who have normal testosterone, they do think, fantasize, and have the desire to have sex with females because their biology is such whereby they can get stimulated like this very, very fast. For women to feel that urge and all that, it takes time. It takes time to build a relationship, friendship, and then they feel slightly horny and the affection, the trust. So with women, it takes time. That is why women, when they have sex, the duration is also very intense and very long. Men, on the other hand, horny very fast, erection very fast, sex very fast, bye-bye very fast. So, you know, that is why when they go for a massage, it's one hour and bye-bye. But for a woman, there are some women who literally would want slow, passionate, romantic, can go two hours, three hours, dinner and sauna steam and jacuzzi and bubble bath and lying on the bed and talking. It can go for six hours, can go for a full day. That is why women definitely and absolutely love a honeymoon. Men, on the other hand, they like uh, the quickie, as they call it. Okay. So now, why am I endorsing or why am I suggesting? Sometimes you must. Here's the thing. Here's the thing which nobody will talk about. Most men, because they want to remain faithful and loyal to their spouse and because they're afraid of society, you know, they bottle this emotion and feeling. And especially if you are alcoholic, especially if you use substance to stimulate your uh, pleasure centers, the problem is one day you will lose control. So it's either you decide when you want to lose control or your feelings will just take over and then you lose control. And if and when that happens, you can either pay a price that can destroy your career, your reputation, your life, or you can even get jailed and... Or forget all that. If that doesn't happen, you'll still end up destroying someone else's life. I mean, nobody talks about this, but have you? do, do you even know how many cases are there of a small girl in the family getting molested or raped, cousin, sister, uh, nephew, niece, um, someone else in the family you get sexually involved with, which you never planned it out and then you regret it. You end up having an affair with a neighbor or 
somebody else and girls are also by the way no saints some of them are very frustrated very lonely or you end up doing something that you really shouldn't shouldn't have done or worse you end up drinking so much that day that you couldn't control it and you forced yourself on a female all the all these examples that i've given you actually happen in fact one of the worst ones can be whereby say your office colleague or someone and you lose control and she loses control and you end up doing something and then there's no turning back and what if the person gets pregnant you 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 see what i'm saying see self control is great if we could actually practice self control and we would succeed and there was no um reason to fail bravo i would have suggested that but the fact of the matter is you will fail and sometimes you may not know when you will fail that is why for me when i was a playboy when my testosterone was super high i um, i used to purposely do this i used to purposely masturbate before i'd go meet a girl not once not twice sometimes even three times so by the time i go meet the girl i don't feel anything but imagine if you never did anything and you're controlling controlling and by the time you see the girl i know of religious guys who when they saw the girl and they would come and open up to me because i was a playboy brother don't tell anyone but i saw the girl i got wet i like what i got wet so he wants to say that he ejaculated just by looking at a girl there are even guys there are even men especially in india if they see a magazine if they see a girl walking in fact there are some videos where they show secretly secret cameras they see a girl walking or talking or standing some guys you know start doing it in the pool masturbating or there's a fashion show some guys are trying to hide it under the magazine even school i've i've actually seen these videos where in a school children are dancing small boys and girls and there is one guy in somewhere and he's put his hand below it's disgusting and the reason why they do it is because they are frustrated how many me being an indian passport holder i'm telling how many indians you just see their behavior on social media why because they are frustrated why do they have that nickname bobs and vagin why do indians when they see a girl i love you because they are so bloody frustrated man so when you do not have an outlet when you do not have any avenue you will get frustrated you will be crazy man and that is where it is necessary sometimes to even cheat where this relationship things come there now i know that these are two separate topics that are talking about one is self control in terms of yourself food and all that and this one relationship maybe i should have made a separate video of both but i don't know if i'll make it but what i want you to know is it's not possible at least as far as i'm my view my view it's not possible to be 100% perfect we will fall we will make mistakes and sometimes you do not know when will fall and make mistakes so sometimes it's better to plan out your mistakes when you will fall and fail and fail in a planned out way rather than not know when you will fail and when you do fail the price to pay is incredibly too high and that can be that can be really i don't know what to say because i'll tell you this i have spoken to victims of uh, rape i have spoken to victims of just imagine how how the person must feel when they say my uncle my brother actually huh? my brother my cousin my father did this to me at that one moment and sometimes after they have failed that way they become addicted to that because now they know it's a ticket to easy sex even small children some of them don't spare that so i think it's very important for us to have an avenue where you can cheat where you can fail and plan out accordingly so that at least you have that that urge that satisfies itself otherwise 
you know, we assume that we are living in a perfect world where everyone can control themselves, everyone can pray, everyone can uh, have massive willpower. But no, I'm sorry. Every human being is different. Everyone is wired different. Upbringing is different. Environment is different. So it's very hard to have one blanket rule for everyone. And like I told you before, please do not use my this video to start doing everything that you have not done before. Plan it out. Think about what I've said and ask yourself, is it applicable to you? Because end of the day, remember what I tell you. Remember this. It's you who will pay the price. If you're caught, you'll pay the price. And the chances of getting caught are always there. I've gotten caught. I know people uh, who are my clients, close, they have got caught. So be mentally prepared. And sometimes the price is way too high. So then don't turn around and say, hey, because of law, I did this. Uh. So anyway, give me your thoughts about this video. Like I said, I, I didn't think I was going to put both these topics together, but I think it's very important because I think someone needs to talk about this and be real about it. So feel free, put your thoughts, comments down below. And uh, I would love to read and know what you have to say. Good, bad, ugly, feel free. This is me signing off. Anyhow, how is my chair? Chai is good. Yeah. Okay. You guys take care.